Alright, let's take a look at our lesson on solving exponential equations. So the one thing that we need to kind of take note of is in order to solve these by hand, you need to be sure that both sides of the equation um, have basically the exponent is to the same, like if it's a 3, base 3 on the left side, it needs to be a base 3 on the right side. Um, base 2 and base 2, they have to have the same base. So that's kind of what we're going to be working on is our first step is to transform them so that they have the same base. So let's kind of do just a, let's just look at a pair that has the same base. Let's say we've got um, 3 to the x equals let's say 3 to the 2x minus 1. All right, as you can see, these two have the same base, they're base 3. So we have a theorem that tells us is if we have two um, exponentials with the same base that are equal to each other, then we can just kind of ignore the base and set the exponents equal to each other. So we're just going to you know, we're going to kind of ignore the base. They don't cancel out. Um, we're just really not paying attention to them. Um, we're going to say x is 2x minus 1. And then we would, you know, move um, things around. We get x equals 1. And so this, to do this, the bases must be equal. Um, so that we can ignore the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. Okay, so that's the procedure we're going to do. We're going to work on getting the bases the same, then we're going to just ignore the bases. We're not really canceling them, we're just ignoring them, and we set the exponents equal to each other to solve. Okay, so that needs to be one exponent equals one exponent. We can't have like one equals two or anything like that. They have to be one equals one to use this rule. Okay, so let's work some examples. On the first example, we see that here on um, the left side, that exponent is, or excuse me, the, the base is a 3. Okay, that's like a prime number. That's kind of small. So we need to really kind of focus on this base, the 27, and think to ourselves, is there a different way that we could write 27 as a base 3? Let's see. Uh, 3 cubed is 27. So... Let's rewrite 27 to be 3 cubed. Whatever happens to be out here um, needs to be kept together in a parenthesis. Okay, so you've got to keep that together in a parenthesis. You can't just stick the 3 in front of the M and be all good to go. So, all right, great. So we have our, our encountered our first. We've got the bases the same. Now we're going to ignore the bases and we're going to set the exponents equal to each other. And it turns out to be just a regular algebra problem, right? We would just distribute the 3. I would add the 3 over, get a 7, then divide by 3. And so my answer, m, would need to be 7 thirds to cause that equation to be true. All right, great, we just finished our first one. All right, so let's look at number two. Hmm, I see I've got a base of two right here, and we know there's no exponent, so that's the implied one. I'm just gonna put the one there just to make sure we remember. So I need to figure out how, if it's possible, to get 64 to read as a base two. Well, let's do factor tree. Y'all know I love factor trees, so. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so let's see. We want it to be a base 2. So I want 2 would be to what power? 
let's see, how many twos do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six twos. So that 64 would turn into 2 to the sixth. Okay, so I've got 2 to the first equals 2 to the sixth. And I'm going to encase that exponent, 3n plus 1 in parentheses. All right, now I'm allowed to just ignore the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. And then I just have a pretty straightforward um, algebra equation to solve. So we would distribute the 6. We would move the 6 over. And then divide by 18 to get our answer. Yay, we have our second one solved. OK, making good progress. All right, let's take a look at number 3. Hmm. That's interesting. So I have a 16 and a 32, 1 over 32. Hmm. I can't make a 16. 16 to the first power is 16. 16 to the second power is something gigantic. I don't know what that is. Um, that would be 16 times 16, whatever that is. So that, that's not going to really work for us. So we need to look at um, changing both bases. Oh, okay, changing both bases. Okay, so let's see. The first thing I want to do is I want to take this and turn it into like, I, I, need, I can't have a fraction hanging out there. I need it to be like a regular um, number. So I need to take the 32 and move it to the numerator to the top. And so I have 16 2n plus 1 equals 32 to the negative 1. And so if you recall, if in order to move the 32 to the numerator, we would have to change the exponent from a 1 to a negative 1. All right, so let's see what we've got over here. So I've got a 16. We know that's 4 times 4, so I could write it as 4 squared. Let's look at the 32. What is that? Um, 32 is what, 8 times 4, um, and then 4 times 2. Yeah, I can't get away with writing 32 as a base of 4. That's just not going to work. So I can't use base 4. We need to go smaller. OK, we can go smaller. So now let's try a base 2. So 16, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4. I would have 2 to the fourth power for 16. Um, so that would be my base for um, 16. So let's take 32 and let's keep working through. So that would be 2 times 2. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. I have 5 twos. So that would be 2 to the fifth. So that's actually where we have to go. We've got to take both bases down to a base 2, uh, since the base 4 just wouldn't work for 32. All right, so let's do this. So we've got 2 to the 4th, and I encase the stuff that's already in the exponent in parentheses. Then we have 2 to the 5th, and again, I encase what is in the exponent in parentheses. All right, so we're going to ignore the exponents, and we would say, so I've got 4 times 2n plus 1 equals negative 5. Now again, we just have a regular old algebra equation to solve. So let's distribute the 4. We would get 8n plus 4 equals negative 5. Move the 4 over by subtracting. Give us a negative 9. And then divide by 8. That would give us a negative 9 eighths. All right, fantastic. Great, OK. So we're making some good progress. Let's go to the second page and look at those. Going to get a little bit trickier just because we have um, fractions. I know we love fractions, right? OK, I know I'm teasing. OK, personally, I kind of like fractions, but I don't really want to work with them if I don't have to. So um, I'm going to bring that 2 up, this 1 half. I'm going to rewrite it as 2 to the negative 1. And I'm going to rewrite the 1 eighth as 8 to the negative 1, just so that we can practice doing that. Do you have to do that? No. Um, but let's just practice. 
So two is a is the smallest base, you know, two it's pretty good. Let's see, let's say eight. Eight is what? Two cubed. So this would be two to the negative one raised to the 2n power. And then eight would be two cubed raised to the negative one, which is raised to the negative n plus two power. Okay, that's a little bit crazy going on there. Well, we can we can work with that. So I have the same bases. Great, I can ignore them. So on the left side, I would multiply, because remember, power to power is multiplying. I would multiply negative 1 times 2n and get negative 2n. Let's see, I would multiply 3 times negative 1 and give me negative 3. Um, and let's just, let's just copy, let's not try to do all that in our head. Let's just copy the negative n plus 2 down. All right, so now let's um, work on distributing the negative 3. So I distributed the negative 3 to a negative n, and I get 3n. Negative 3 times a positive 2 is a negative 6. Okay, fantastic. I would move the negative 2n over because I like to keep the exponents po or the um, coefficients positive. So that would give me a 5n, and then I would move the 6 over. It would be, give me a 6. Then I divide by 5, and we get 6 fifths. Okay, great. One more problem. Now on this one, since the numerator is not 1, I'm not going to really do this little scenario where I change like 1 half to 2 to the negative 1. I'm not going to really do that because I've got, I don't have a 1 in the numerator. I have another number. So I'm just going to have to deal with working with a fraction. It's okay. We can deal with it. Um, so 3 halves. Hmm. So let's kind of isolate. Let's look at the numerator by itself and the denominator by itself. Um, I've got a 3 and then a 2. Okay. All right. A 3 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator. On the other side, hmm, I see where I could get this to turn into 2 cubed. Right, I see where I could do that. And I could get this to turn into 3 cubed. I can see that. But I don't, they're not matched up. Like the 3 in the left side is in the numerator, and the 3 in the right side is in the denominator. That's just a little bit messed up. OK. But let's, let's kind of work through it step by step first before we worry about you know that issue. So I've got, can't really do anything over here right now. i got 3 halves of the x minus 2. So let's rewrite 8 as 2 cubed. So 8 would be 2 cubed, and 27 would be 3 cubed. OK, all right, we're making progress. Now we also have a property. If I have the exact same exponent here, what I can do is I can pull that outside the parentheses. So I've got 3 halves to the x minus 2, and then I've got 2 thirds to the 3, and of course it's all timesing, times negative 2x plus 5. Okay. All right, so we're making progress. We have just like a 3 halves and a 2 thirds. So we really need to think about what, how would we change this? So if I wanted, and let's focus on the right side, if I wanted the 3 to move from the denominator to the numerator, what could I do to it? What do you think I could do to it? Um, and if I wanted the 2 to move from the numerator to the denominator, what could I do to it? And I think you all are kind of catching on. I would have to change the exponent from a 1 to a negative 1. So let's again leave this side alone. And in order to accomplish our task, what we would need to do to make it 3 halves, because that's what we want, is raise that to the negative 1 power. And I've already got a 3 you know, times the negative 2x plus 5. OK, so if I raise 3 halves to the negative 1 power, let's just do a little side work over here. 3 halves to the negative 1 power, that's the same as 3 to the negative 1 over 2 to the negative 1. 
which is the same as 2 over 3. Okay, so those are all equivalent, just different ways to write the same thing. Okay, so now we finally accomplished in getting our um, bases the same. So let's ignore the bases and let's set the exponents equal to each other. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the negative 1 times the 3 and get a negative 3. All right, so great, making good progress. Now we simply have a regular old, you know, algebra equation to solve. So let's go ahead and distribute the negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 2x would be, what is 6x? Negative 3 times a positive 5 would be a negative 15. All right, so let's start moving things around, combining like terms. I move this x over, I subtract it, that would give me a 5x. I add 15 to both sides, so 15 minus 2 is what, 13. And then I divide by 5, and that gives me my answer of 13 fifths. Okay.